North Korea is stepping up its pressure on the U.S. as the regime's year-end deadline approaches for progress to be made in the nuclear negotiations. Today it's said it conducted a very important test on Saturday at a missile engine test site it promised to destroy last year. Experts think the test could have been a solid fuel engine used for ICBMs. North Korea claims it conducted a, quote, very important test on Saturday at its Sohe satellite launching ground. Pyongyang state-run Korean Central News Agency carried a statement Sunday issued by the North Academy of National Defense Science. It says the test was successful and the results were reported to the Central Committee of the North's ruling party, meaning essentially the regime's leader, Kim Jong-un. The Pentagon is considering a plan to add up to 7,000 additional U.S. forces to the Middle East to counter what it sees as an increasing threat from Iran. That is according to two U.S. defense officials. But the Pentagon's top policy advisor says the defense secretary has not officially made any decision. Tonight, the State Department is putting a very large number on the total of Iranian civilians killed in massive demonstrations there over that hike in gasoline prices. We're learning about U.S. seizure also of missile parts allegedly being smuggled to Yemeni rebels. Overnight, the U.S. Navy reported seizing a cache of Iranian missile parts set to be delivered to rebels in Yemen. The operation highlighted the Western efforts to counter Iranian threats against American allies in the region as Israel and the U.S. work towards a joint defense agreement. Hi everyone, I'm Rena Ninen. Thank you for joining us. Stunning new details about the gunman who shot and killed three people at a Florida military base. The Associated Press reports the gunman held a dinner party just days earlier, watching mass shooting videos with three other students. The shooter, Mohammed Saeed al Sanrani, apparently had a dinner party earlier this week where he watched videos of mass shootings with other people. That's according to the Associated Press, who also reports that one of the people who watched those videos with him actually recorded him committing the massacre here on the base and two other people were reportedly in a vehicle watching Saeed al Sanrani carry out the shooting. The Associated Press also reports that apparently 10 Saudi nationals are being held here on the base and that others are unaccounted for tonight. Emergency services rushed to the scene, but it took time to access the six-story building, located in a congested area of Delhi's old city, where narrow lanes are lined with small manufacturing and storage units. The workshop produced handbags and luggage, and flammable raw materials evidently fueled the fire as it swept through the building. One eyewitness blamed electrical faults for the blaze. As authorities launched their investigations, questions have already arisen as to whether the factory was operating with valid permits and was following fire safety codes. Questions this morning involving the crash of a Tesla car that police say was driving in autopilot mode, it collided with a police cruiser, and authorities want to know what caused that crash. ABC's Trevor Alt is right here in studio with much more on this story. Trevor, good morning to you. Good morning, Dan. You know, they say self-driving cars are the future, but there have been some speed bumps on the way there. And the latest is this weekend in Connecticut. A driver had his Tesla in autopilot mode, but he crashed, and police were right there because they're the ones who got hit. This morning, the automotive supergiant Tesla and its autopilot mode under fire once again for the company's self-driving feature. Police tell the Hartford Current this 2018 Tesla Model 3 was in autopilot mode driving down Interstate 95 in Norwalk, Connecticut when the driver checked on his dog in the back seat, the car slamming into the rear of a police cruiser parked on the side of the highway. Two men are dead, a family torn apart after their plane clipped trees and crashed north of Bundaberg. Tonight we know the pilot abandoned his first landing attempt, his second ending in tragedy. This was meant to be a short Sunday morning joy flight. It's ended as an almost unimaginable tragedy. 
Two men are dead, one family torn apart. The passenger, aged 71, his brother-in-law, the pilot, 60. This is his property, that clearing, his very own private airstrip. Unfortunately, uh, while attempting to land, the planes encountered some difficulties. Those difficulties, nearby trees, the plane clipped on the way in. The pair took off from the Captain Creek property, a five-hour drive north of Brisbane at sunrise, turning around at Miriam Vale to the west. They abandoned a landing attempt at 6.15 and tried again half an hour later, Ali Muhammad Jisti's pasta factory, owned by his Muslim family, was burnt down by a mob of around 100 people in May last year. It happened during days of violence targeting Sri Lanka's Muslim community after the Easter Sunday attacks. Suicide bombers, who were members of a local group linked to ISIL, killed more than 250 people in attacks on churches and hotels. The newly elected president, Godabaya Rajapaksa, has promised to protect minorities and to serve every Sri Lankan, in his words, irrespective of race or religion. The Buddhist nationalist group Bodhubala Sena, which means Army of Buddhist Power, is accused of inciting hate and taking part in violent attacks on Sri Lanka's minority Muslim and Christian communities in recent years. Donc nous sommes ici, place du Trocadéro, devant la tour Eiffel, qui est le symbole de la COP21, euh, où 100 euh, citoyennes et citoyens brandissent 100 portraits d'Emmanuel Macron qui, qui ont été réquisitionnés, enfin décrochés dans les mairies, euh, qui sont activement recherchés par la police, euh, pour rappeler que la France ne respecte pas les engagements de Paris, pour rappeler qu'Emmanuel Macron tient un double discours en s'érigeant champion du climat, mais en ne mettant pas en place en France une véritable politique qui est à la hauteur de l'enjeu climatique et qui a entamé un travail de casse sociale euh, qui a déclenché une grève générale. The former spy boss Mo Sheikh says the former president Jacob Zuma certainly misused the intelligence service, but he is refusing to go as far as calling it an offence of treason. Sheikh, speaking to Karima Brown on The Fix just a little earlier, says the constitution is also silent on the matter. Well, treason is a weighty question to ask on a Sunday morning, but I would uh, like to reframe that. The, in my view, the, to act treason, uh, to bring a charge of treason is to act treasonably, uh, and that must speak to the intent of the person involved. I think that what we have here is the president not being mindful of his constitutional obligations, especially in regard to intelligence. I went there, look at what was happening, and I didn't see the, the banana on the wall. So, and I realized that the guy was eating the banana. He was not arrested, but we asked him to leave the booth and to leave the fair, and we have his contact and everything. So, we can go, we can go further, but I don't think I don't think we will.